yet, but are in the process of transition. Um, this is in the midst of our 21 day process with Dr. Tejasvi, our guru. And I have so much, so much to share. And a lot of what I've experienced is information written, downloads written in my system, in my DNA, more than anything that I can actually share verbally. I'm having difficulties um, expressing it in words, but I have a knowledge of the shift that's been happening. And I've suddenly had this shift of divine purity, spiritual divine purity, a place where I reached that is an alignment with the spirit, an alignment with Krishna Radha, a, an identification with Krishna Radha, and a pure identification with so much humility. You know, I had fear of identifying with Krishna Radha because of humility. I said, well, it's not humble. How can I compare myself to Krishna Radha? I can fall in love, but I'm not. And then I learned that the highest form of humility is to be able to say, yes, I am Krishna Radha, yet at the same time, I'm nothing, but at the same time, I'm everything. So that creates the balance when you have on one pocket the nothing and the other pocket the everything. And my experience is now with dealing with humanity as, as just a human, you know, walking this earth, walking this plane, having a human who's really a spiritual being, having a human experience, learning that through the experiences with Galoka, learning that a practicing detachment, the, the act of practicing detachment will actually bring my ultimate desire not to be reborn again on this dimension, but to go on and live in the ecstasy in Goloka. Because in Goloka itself, there is this constant transition from one magical experience to the next. And it's, it's constant detachment, but it's a detachment that doesn't hurt because you're in, you're in your higher self. So you're not experiencing this pain that we have in this world of detachment because you're in your higher self. So taking that to the archetypes that we've learned with Dr. Tej, my b biggest um, my biggest realization was that when I am not dealing with my higher self, most of my actions actually include all the archetypes. And that's fascinating to me. It's like a domino effect. Which means, for example, if I see somebody who is falling apart or depressed, so if I'm not in my higher self, I'll start wanting to fix it because I'll judge this person and then because I judge this person, I start becoming the hero. And then because I start becoming the hero and this person doesn't want to change or to shift, I start judging and then I start from the judgment, I start to try to eradicate. I may become even the villain, like try to cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. And then from cutting it off, I try to become you know, it's just one thing leads to the next. But if I take the same experience and I'm in 
and my higher self and I look at this person from a place of I don't have to save them I just have to guide them I just have to lead them I just have to give them my hand and give them the tools then I don't judge because I am not judging Use them the I am just left at the looking at them as oh wow they have such great potential this is really and how not can I save them but the savior becomes a help becomes a helper more a guide like a divine leader and so you offer them the tools because you're not judging and from the offering the tools you also become the pleaser but the pleaser from away from a divine state of being which is which is more like not how can I please you but how can I again lead you to a place of honor so it's really beautiful for me to be able to navigate the archetypes from my higher self and from my other reflections higher self too which is my friend my lover my partner my member my children so to look at them as a higher spirit and that's one of my most important awakenings that I've had over this journey was the realization but not only the learning but the realization that everyone when you talk to them there's a, they are a spirit a high spirit divine spirit besides what they portray themselves to be what they portray themselves to be is a bundle of memories of centuries that they are trying to get rid of dissolve of or haven't come to that place so everyone is God, everyone is divine spirit. And so it also affected all my relationships and for eternal, eternally, my relationships with my parents, my partners, my lovers, everyone. And my children is just dealing with everybody. And when you have an expectation of people, not an expectation of selfishness, but an expectation of love, people to be acting like the higher selves and when you look at, up at somebody and you honor someone they usually live up to that so automatically things will shift that's that's what's the beauty of the archetypes which I absolutely love and you know and the beauty of this journey was also being able to see my darkness without judgment so the act of being able to see my judgment without the act of being able to see my darkness my fears my archetypes without judging it that in itself shifts that into light that act itself by being able to view myself and all parts of myself the shadows not as darkness but as independent um, independent expressions of fear, of emotions, that in itself is the act of medicine and shedding light onto all the darkness that is there. Um, I was also able to see and to know even deeper how our guru, Dr. Tej, has become this form of avatar who's able to carry so much of our, I don't know how to say this, so much of our, you know, our own karmas and with, and with so much grace and so much delicate uh, disposition and so much love patience the perseverance that he has towards us that in itself creates a shift in our DNA that in itself creates a shift universally when there is this person who is really an avatar who is really divine carrying us in a way of so much with so much time 
respect and honor towards our child like he said that he looks at us like we were seven years old and without saying I can feel it that in itself creates this tremendous everlasting shift there's so much more I want to say I had so much fun in Goloka but it seems like this trip this journey into the divine um, is what what Dr. Tej wanted most was the extraction and spirit and sharing of the inner growth of suffering that is tr evolved into joy and ecstasy. I love you all. 